We had information from uh, the BJP camp and from the RLD camp. Congress has now come out and reacted to this. They say that they will speak to Jayan Chaudhary and get more clarity. For now, they're putting up a brave face, going on to say that all is well in the alliance. Right now, these kind of rumours are baseless. That's also what they said, though, before Nitish Kumar had left their fold. Pallavi, my colleague, now joining us, uh, getting us more details. Pallavi, what else have you gathered from your sources within the Congress? Well, you're absolutely right, Poonam. Very brazening it out and brave words coming in from top Congress sources when we ask them about the possibility of the RLD dumping them and joining the NDA. They are saying this has come as a bit of a setback to us, but we're still reaching out to Jayan Chaudhary. Those pictures of Jayan along with Akhilesh Yadav announcing their alliance is something they wouldn't want to be blacked out anytime soon. But as far as the SP and the Congress heat shedding talks are concerned, that seems to be more or less on track. What we are being told is that before the Yatra enters the UP leg, roughly around the 15th or 16th of February, the seat sharing hurdles or talks will be sorted out between the SP and the Congress party. And the fact that Akhilesh Yadav has now gone public to say he's going to be a part of the Bharat Jodo Nyaya Yatra, that's a huge leg up to the entire idea of India front. We are also being told that he has told them that we are, I'm going to be joining in from Rai Bareilly. Now, Rai Bareilly is the lone Lok Sabha seat for the Congress party. That's Sonia Gandhi's constituency. And the Congress feels that an Akhilesh Yadav by their side in Rai Bareilly could have an impact on Amethi should Rahul Gandhi decide to contest both from Vayanad as well as Amethi. However, the Congress is also saying that we do expect that at least the Samajwadi Party workers will join the Yatra even as the Yatra enters uh, the entire Uttar Pradesh leg, so to say. So those seat sharing talks are supposed to get a finality before the 16th. Another week perhaps before we find out what exactly transpires uh, within the Congress and its allies in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, do stay on with us. Uh, Pallavi Payal also joining us on this broadcast, getting us more details. Payal, how is the BJP camp looking at this? We're given to understand there have already been some talks, perhaps some understanding as well on how many seats or what seats would uh, be given if the RLD were to join their ranks. Uh, well, the RLD uh, leadership, in fact, led by Jayan Chaudhary, has already been in touch with the BJP top leadership. In fact, has had a couple of meetings in the last a few days, is what we're given to understand. They're seeking about three to four seats, out of which the BJP is likely to give them three seats, which includes the seats like Mathura, of course, Bagpat, uh, and uh, uh, one other seat. But obviously, the BJP leadership is not very keen on, and neither has Jayan Chaudhary, in fact, demanded the Muzaffar Nagar seat, as being reported in certain sections of the media. The BJP is very, very confident that Sanjeev Balian, one of their tallest leaders uh, in terms of the chart leadership, and somebody who's been a member of parliament for the last two terms and has been a minister in the government, is good enough to uh, make this really happen in terms of winning that seat for the BJP. But yes, it's a very interesting combination given the fact that the BJP is looking at getting that 400 score. Remember, the Prime Minister made that announcement, Poonam, on the floor of the House, and there's no going back on those numbers as well. So the BJP is making every move possible so that they can actually ensure maximum participation in the NDA fold. NDA already has about 38 to 39 partners. And addition of more will only help because there's just been a recent addition of uh, Nitish Kumar's JDU, which only strengthens the party's prospects in the in the state of Bihar. And of course, they're trying to make all uh, things really work and, you know, in a way that they can actually achieve that 400 uh, target, which looks pretty unachievable to a lot of opposition parties. They feel that, you know, probably the BJP is living in some la, -la land or living in a dream world. But, you know, the BJP is of that mood, that thing that if we say something, we'll prove it. The mandate for the BJP has only gotten bigger from 2014 to 2019. And of course, they're hoping that 2024 will be a, a record victory. And it's, it's not an easy task by any standard, but the BJP is making those moves very, very fast. And of course, if Jain Chaudhary comes over uh, to the to the BJP, it's a big blow to the Indian alliance. Given the fact that he recently had an alliance talk with Akhilesh Yadav, some seats were also announced. But, you know, obviously Jain Chaudhary also looking at his party prospect. With the fact that no regional party Poonam wants to be out of power, uh, with the fact that uh, they are very, very well, well aware that the writing is on the wall and the BJP and the NDR also to come back to power. Especially after that uh, confidence that was displayed by the Prime Minister inside the Parliament. Uh, Pallavi, many within uh, the India Bloc Alliance would be saying that there definitely are going to be jitters. On the face of it, they may come out and brazen it out and say that this is just overconfidence of the BJP. But they too perhaps do have a plan B in mind. 
See, Poonam, the deadline for the seat sharing talks, which was decided in the Mumbai India Fan meeting, was actually 31st of December. That was shifted to the first week of, uh, uh, towards the mid of January, I would say. And they were hoping that by first week of February, the names would start coming out on who are going to be the Lok Sabha candidates. While the BJP has yet not divulged the names, but it's pretty much clear that that has already been decided. So it's just a matter of time. Now, by first to second week of March, we expect that a poll schedule should be out. Uh, there would be clarity on when the elections are going to be held but there's no clarity on the India front. In fact that smaller meetings which are taking place uh, state by state, those meetings are still going on and in the case of Uttar Pradesh you have to go back to the drawing board should the RLD decide to join the NDA. In Bihar again they have to redraw the strategy because the JDU is no longer part of the India front. So there are these small hurdles which are coming up and I would say actually big hurdles because of which that big final meeting of the India front is not taking place. What is even worse is that they were planning several joint rallies and at the time when the Yatra is also taking place, those joint rallies also have not taken place. So on one side, you have the Prime Minister who's going to speak in a short while from now in Rajya Sabha. He's talking about 370 or 400 par. On the other side, you have the India front with no clarity on who's with them, who are going to be the candidates, what's going to be the seat sharing allocation. Right, no clarity, no common minimum program as of yet, uh, no plan on any joint rally so far either. But uh, let's look at what the BJP is doing on fortifying the NDA because they've now come out with a number. And Payal, there are talks about uh, Chandrababu Naidu, the TDP, the Jansena all uh, coming back together uh, into the NDA fold. The Jansena, of course, already is uh, with the BJP. But what are we hearing on that front? Well, it's a very interesting combination if you see, you know, in the state of Andhra Pradesh because on one front, Janasena has an alliance with TDP, but Janasena also has an alliance with BJP as well. So, you know, they are looking at bringing those forces together. Remember, Chandra Babu Naidu was very much part of the NDA one. Uh, you know, that we really saw with Prime Minister Narendra Modi as a Prime Minister. But of course, because of uh, state compulsions, including demanding for a special status, he was in fact forced to walk out of that alliance. But it seems that all, all seems to be well uh, with that alliance now. Are all expected to be seen as well. The leadership will be meeting sometime today or tomorrow because Chandra Babu Naidu arrives in the national capital this evening. We want to to understand and is likely to meet the party top brass of the BJP. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of, what kind of threats can the BJP really extract from the CDP as far as their forces are concerned. Because remember, one of the agenda on the BJP front has also been to make their footprints down south, which has been practically zero barring Karnataka. So, if the BJP is looking to get about four to six seats in in, in Andhra Pradesh, it will be a quite a quite a bit for them if they are able to win a couple of seats and you know make their presence felt in Andhra Pradesh. Because as of now, you know, Apunam, uh, if you look at the vote percentage of the BJP in the last election, their vote percentage was even lesser than no doubt, was less than one percent. And that's something which the BJP felt that they they have to look at expanding the footprint uh, down uh, down south in a big big way, and obviously. That could be a big step ahead because Sajid Babu Naidu will obviously want to be focused on the assembly elections also which happen simultaneously along with the Lok Sabha elections and they right. want to so that they are able to come back to power. Right. So hectic activity happening in both camps as far as the NDA and the India Alliance goes. Which narrative, which camp is going to emerge uh, stronger? We'll have to wait and watch. But Pallavi and Payal for the moment, thank you so much for getting us those details.